Hi, Cindy Cross here from The Post and Mail and today I want to share with you a recipe that is really simple and I'm sure you all know it but it's sausage rolls but with a bit of a twist. One, I like to bulk out the sausage mix that you buy from the supermarket or the butcher because they have um, these little packs here already pureed kind of meats and goodness knows what but um, it's the right texture. But what I want to do is, because uh, I've got four kids with me this week, um, I want to bulk it out a little bit and I want to sneak in some vegetables and a few more flavours to just take it to the next level. So that's what I'm going to do. So I've grated one carrot, which I'm going to put in the bowl. Then I'm going to chop some spring onions. So normally I would do onions and I'd grate it and I'd be boiling by now. But I actually don't have onions and I have spring onions, so plan B is great. Instead of chopping the whole way along here, I'm going to fold twice. Now what that's done is created a small amount to chop of a bulk lot of things. So I'm just going to keep it firm, nice and together. Chop all those spring onions in just a small amount of space. Now I'm going to sneak in some green. I just need to debug that from the garden. That's just some spinach leaves. We don't necessarily want the crunch of bugs and I don't want to wash it and get it wet and then use a whole salad spinner. So I just give them a little whack on the table. Any bugs that were attached are now not attached. However, if I would have to say though, because you're probably freaking out about that, I would have to say though that if I did the old flat thing on the table and a snail or two fell off, I would definitely then go and wash it and skin it. But as I saw, not a single bug. Um, I know that that is free. I do like crunch, but not that sort of crunch. All right, so I'm gonna get some spinach in there. Actually, they were silver beet leaves and beetroot leaves, so spinach, but same thing, plan B. Now here's a big lot of chives. I wanna get them in as well. So I wanna get some flavor, a little bit of cuteness, and also um, I just wanna extend it a little bit further. So one, I'm packing in the veggies, flavors, and health part of it, which would otherwise be a reasonably unhealthy meal. Um, I like to hide it. And just every now and then you want a meal where you're not forcing your kids to eat stuff. It's really good. So these will go in seconds. Now next, I'm going to add a big clove of garlic. Now I've used all my big garlic and I've plant replanted it because that's what you do when you keep your own garlic. You plant the best of the best for next year. And that's how you get a good crop every year. So I've used all them, so I'm left with my little garlic. So I'm putting two in. Now I don't know if you know this, but if you hold it by the... Um, the root end and have the pointy end you don't have to peel it or anything you just start zesting it into the zester and the peel doesn't go through so that's another I don't know if you know that tip also your fingers don't smell all day because you've only been holding on to the root end and the skin part wait for the bang you know me there we go and it's done um, so that is basically a carrot three spring onions a bunch of uh, chives two little garlic cloves and some silver beet leaves, spinach or beetroot leaves because they're all kind of the same thing. Now I'm gonna put it with the meat um, in the mixer on the flat blade and that will just combine everything together and get it the one texture, which is what I'm after. So I'll cut to that. Spoilies. Honestly, not the most attractive thing you've ever seen. Is not the time for speed 10. <laughs> and I know that because I've done that. Just speed one. Oh, I'm going crazy. I'm on speed two. I just want to whip it till it comes together. All right, so now we need to do a pastry brush, so an egg wash of the pastry sheets. So I'm going to line them up here. Now I'm not going to whisk this egg only because that's an extra dish and I go to great lengths to avoid those. I'm just going to use the pastry brush. It whisks it up enough. That's plenty. So all I 
I do is actually coat the whole base of the pastry. Okay, that's two sheets there. Also, I like I know that I need to cut it down the middle. So I try not to cut the plastic part. These are just puff pastry, by the way. You could do short crust, but I think the puff gives it that crunch, which is really nice. So all I'm going to do is, so I've cut them that way. So I'm going to run a tube of this stuff here up the middle, just by hands. If your hands feel like they're sticking too much, here's a great tip. Wet hands. Wet hands are brilliant. All right, so I'm just going to manoeuvre the maybe cursing. Right, so far so good. Manoeuvre a reasonably neat log, I guess you would say, or row of this new mix. Now, the smell with the garlic in it and the spring onion and the chives, the carrot is there at the moment for sweetness and bulking. It's not giving up any aromas yet, but it is cheap, it is good for you, and it does bulk it out. So how I like to do this is I like to roll them up from the side, leaving the blue attached. Over she goes, and it seals on itself because the whole thing had an egg wash anyway. So we know that's going to seal, and I'll stick it there. Now, I have been known to serve these at my Amber Ridge restaurant when I had that going, my cafe, um, as this is a whole serve when it's cooked. I love that country hospitality. And they do look even more impressive when they come out the oven because they bake and the pastry puffs and does all the right things. So, time to cut them. You can make these whatever size you like, um, but I like the little mini ones. I don't know, they're so cute. So I've managed to get six out of this one roll. Now I'm gonna pop it on the baking tray with baking paper, man's best invention, if you ask me. And pop them on. Leave a little gap between them. You can be sure that I'm not measuring these sizes. Just don't roll them. I should also mention that I'm going to crank this oven up to about 200 or 220 degrees. There's nothing worse than undercooked pastry and I'm going to show you the difference between not quite cooked and cooked. And because there's layers of puff pastry, you don't just want the outside layers cooked. It's a really good tip. Get your oven hot and then pop them in and make sure you bring them out not just at the first hint of brown. We actually nearly want burnished and you'll appreciate it when you do it that way. All right, so we'll pop them in the oven. Yum, yum. The question is, how many are going to be left when the kids come home? I'll try not to eat them all. I have to say the house is smelling delicious and it's very tempting right now to start eating these. However, I want to show you what I mean by, is the pastry ready? Here is the difference. Ow, that's hot, that's hot, that's hot, that's hot. Oh, here we go. So on this side, even though they're slightly brown, they're not quite, like it started to brown and it's okay, but it hasn't fully puffed yet. Whereas this one, you hear that? You hear that sound? That's what you're after. So I'm gonna remove the few of the darker ones, which have obviously been fan heated a bit better. And I'm going to pop the others back in. So there's about five or six there ready and the rest of them need another five minutes or until they crunch when you tap them on the top. And that's how you know. Interestingly, the second lot I did, which weren't as crowded on the tray, are all ready because the fan and the heat has circulated the air around them and they're already ready. Brilliant. Yum, 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 yum. Well, here we go. Sausage rolls. They're cooked. They're flaky. They are going to be delicious. They're still flaming hot. Um, but what a great way. So I managed to get two trays out of that lot. Mm -mm -mm. Hello, who's coming over? <laughs> Actually, the kids are going to be so excited for this one. 
thanks for watching and I hope you give it a go.